we're back out here once again. And today, it's all about these guys. That's right, summertime frog fishing is here. And I'm going to show you some tricks that I use that you may have never seen before. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Whoa, that's a big fish. He almost knocked me out of the boat. Whoa. Ha ha. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and it's finally here, isn't it? Summertime frog fishing, one of the best times of year to be a bass angler. Now, topwater fishing is great, getting a strike on a spook is amazing, but nothing really compares to a blow up on a topwater frog, right? Whenever you're coming across that mat of thick vegetation and a great big largie comes from underneath and just explodes on your frog, sending vegetation and slop everywhere, it gets my heart going every single time. And these are very versatile. They can be used in a lot of different ways. A lot of anglers aren't really taking advantage of how versatile they can be. And we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna show you things that I do with frogs, work them a little bit differently that you maybe have never seen before. And another thing about them is, well, they are very user friendly. If you're a novice bass angler, this is a great way to get started. There are no muss, no fuss. And because of their weedless nature, they take a lot of the stress out of learning the basics of bass fishing, such as learning to work with a bait cast reel. You can use these in flooded brush and they're not gonna get hung up. You can use these around slop, they're not gonna get hung up. You can use them under docks. There's a lot of places you can fish a frog that you wouldn't think about fishing a frog and you'll be able to get them back because of how weedless they are. And like I said, we're gonna talk about a lot of that. But right here, this is my frogging setup. This is my great big Max 40 from Abu Garcia. This is a 40 size reel and I've got 50 pound braid on it to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. We're going to get back to that in just a second. I've got a 7.6 heavy power rod with a medium fast tip. This is a broomstick and I want this set up so I can really wrench those bass out of that deep thick cover. Whenever you get a bass with a frog, well, the first thing you're gonna do is dive into that vegetation and you need some way to pull them out. And that's what this setup is for. Now, a lot of guys will run straight braid to their frog. Nothing wrong with that. If that's what you have confidence in, if that's what you feel comfortable with, then by all means do that. Now, I use a braid to fluorocarbon leader. And the reason why I do is because my lakes, the water is clear and shallow. So. You're not going to hide anything from those bass. So I need to disguise that line just a little bit. The bass are very line shy, so I have to keep that in mind. And another thing is I tend to cut and retie a lot. And I find that it's easier for these old man hands to just work with fluorocarbon because braid tends to be a little bit wispy. And it, it can be a pain to work with a lot of times, especially if you've got dry old man hands like I do. So I went out to the big lake today and today was kind of a strange day. We had overcast skies, we had calm winds. It was nice and slick calm when I got out there. You would think that's perfect frogging conditions. But first thing you gotta do is you've got to locate the bass. And I didn't really have to start with a search bait because I had a really good idea where those bass were gonna be. Those fish had just gotten hammered over the weekend you know, it being Memorial Day this past weekend, those fish had just gotten hammered. So I knew they were going to be hiding away from the pressure. And as I've said before, on the big lake, that means those fish have gone north, way north. And on any lake, that's what you're gonna to have to think about. Are the bass trying to hide from the pressure or are they going to be moving into their summer pattern? For us, they've been in their summer pattern for a while, but I will tell you, the urge to get away from fishing pressure and to get away from those boats is oftentimes stronger than the urge to go out deep for the summer pattern. And today, especially, that was the case after Memorial Day weekend. I didn't really have to hunt for the bass. I knew where they would be. So I really didn't have to lead with something like a spook or a square bill as a search bait because 
I knew where the bass were. And sure enough, when I pulled up with the little boat right where I thought they would be, they were splashing all around me. And as a test, well, the first thing that I threw was a good old Waco rig. Honestly, I hadn't used a Waco rig the last few times I was out. I just kind of wanted to put one in my hands and try one with a June bug worm. And well, this happened on the very first cast. We have a June bug yum dinger tied on. It's been a minute since I used a June bug yum dinger. And I've got it tied on a Waco rig with a 1 16th ounce hook or 1 16th ounce um, tungsten nail weight hook. I got it on a one aught light wire EWG hook is what I've got it on. Got him. That is not a bad fish either, kids. Oh, dang it. Well, it looks like I'm only getting one cast and one fish. Right there. Yeah. Pound and a quarter. Nice fish. I wish he hadn't slung my worm in the water, but anyway, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Mr. Fish. Thank you. And there it goes. Nice little bass. That was a gorgeous little bass, you know. So we knew the bass were there, the bass were active. I picked up the frog stick. In this case, I started with this guy. I started with this six cents Vega popping frog. And normally they don't come with a red mouth. I painted that red because I wanted it to be red. These are a little bit slimmer. They're a little bit longer and they're still five eighths of an ounce. So they're still kind of heavy. So this thing casts away and again, this is on a fairly heavy duty setup. This has got 30 pound braid on it, but it's still on a fairly heavy duty setup. And I was casting it right into some muck. And I'm telling you what, this thing was getting blown up on almost from the very beginning. Well, unfortunately though, I wasn't able to get any hooks in a fish. I would get them started and they would come back to me a little ways and they would spit it. So that told me I needed to change things up just a little bit. Something about that frog that they just weren't getting into. Or maybe since it's brand new out of the package, I may have to modify it just a little bit. But after having several blow ups and losing a couple of fish, I decided I needed to make a change. And that's when I changed to this guy right here. The good old chartreuse, or as my buddy Hank says, sartreuse. This is a scum frog, and you can see it's only got one tail. It kind of looks like a tadpole. And I fish this a bit differently. And it didn't even take, I don't know, just a couple of casts. I saw a fish swirl. I cast this right to where it was. This was the result. All right, we saw a nice jump right there. So I'm going to try and hit that with a frog real quick. One more cast that way. Big fish. He almost knocked me out of the boat. Whoa. Ha ha. All right, come here, you. Ah. All right, there we go. Whoops. Nice little frog fish on the frog. I'm stabbing myself in the thumb, trying to get it out of his mouth. All right, appreciate that, little buddy. Eh, nice little pound and a quarter fish right in that area on the frog. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And there he goes. All right, let's go get another one. A very nice bass on the frog, and that thing really wanted that frog. I had no doubter on that. So 
making that change to that frog turned out to be the deal that I needed to do because I ended up getting a couple more really nice blow-ups on that frog before the end of the day. But I want to go out on the water. I want to show you guys how I'm working those frogs and how I'm doing them maybe just a little bit differently in a little bit different places and with a little bit different retrieves than what you're used to seeing. So let's head out of the water and I'll show you how I'm working them. All right, I am working this chartreuse scum frog. This is one of my favorite frogs. And you can see where I'm at, okay? You've got hydrilla starting to come up above the surface of the water. We've got all this through here, all this very thick vegetation. And this is, you know, this is where a frog is really gonna shine. And what I'm doing is, well, I'm just casting it out. I'm letting it sit, let those rings dissipate. And then I just, with this particular frog, I just drop my rod tip like that. And that's all I'm doing. And I love the action that I get with this particular type of frog doing that. You know, I can target like that clump of hydrilla right there, that entire clump, and I can just cast right to it. I don't have to worry about putting my frog in the middle of that. And again, just drop that rod tip. That's all you have to do. And I'm not even moving it that much. But the, pro the thing is, is that frog just hops across the top of the water. It's a great way to work a frog, especially this particular type of frog. Um, a twin tail frog, like your normal, you know, your booyah or your kermy frogs or whatever. I can't get them to do that as easily as I can with this scum frog. And it just kind of skips across the surface. And I get huge, huge blow-ups. I got huge blow-ups today. I got two huge blow-ups today doing that. Maybe a little, maybe three. I think it was three. But anyway, that's how I'm working, a, you know, that type of particular type of frog. Okay, I have the sixth sense. And this is called, I believe, a Vega frog. It's kind of got a little thinner profile. But this is still a 5 8 ounce, and it's a popping frog, and I went ahead and painted the mouth red because they, they're black when they come. But let me show you how I'm working these. And this is, you know, a type of frog I'm using very much like a popper. You know, I've got all this hydrilla, I've got all this vegetation, so a popper's not going to work really good here. But I can just twitch my rod tip down like that and get that frog to pop. Give it good, you know, good long pauses in between. And I'm not trying to overpower it. I'm not yanking on it. I'm just popping it like that. Sometimes I do harder. Sometimes I do softer. You know, I mean, it all depends. And again, this is another one of those I can get right in the middle of all that thick slop right there, that patch of hydrilla that's coming up to the surface. And I can just work it through that. And because it's a frog, I don't have any worries about it. Working a frog this way through that type of vegetation, I'm telling you what, I have gotten some huge blow-ups. And it's really a lot of fun if you've got a thick mat of hyd uh, hydrilla or milfoil or lily pads or whatever. And you're bringing your frog across the top and that, you know, that slop just explodes as that bass comes up from underneath and just crushes that frog but that's what i'm doing with this i'm kind of hitting those in between spots where the other frog i was basically going right into the slop and working it over the top this one here i'm popping it kind of in the open areas and then bringing it over the slop like i said i'm working it like just like i would a popper You know, I'm not getting in any hurry. This is not based, This is not really a, a technique that you use to cover water with. Ooh, I caught a hydrilla fish. 
really? I guess those are some good hooks on that thing. Oh, I lost it. I guess I'm going to have to change those hooks out. Anyway, last cast here. You can kind of see what I'm doing. As the wind has really picked up. Got him. Oh, no, I didn't get him. I didn't get him, but oh my goodness. What a blow up. That was really neat, wasn't it? I'm working that frog and I got a blow up doing it. And I'll be honest, after I stopped recording, I got another monster blow up. And that one I hooked into, so that was a nice fish. Unfortunately, I, battery was dead. I don't think I got that one on camera. I'll have to go back and look and see. But I, by that time of the day, all the batteries for my chesty were dead. I was running on empty. But it was still nice to see that blow up. And getting those frequently, even on a pressured fishery, that's something. Like I said, those bass are going to be running away from pressure. They're wanting to set up in their summer pattern, so they're pulled away from the bank, but they're also going to be as far away from that pressure as they can be. And that's exactly where I found them. They were in a predictable location right out in the middle of that channel, hiding in that hydrilla. Cast the frog out there a few times and ended up with some really nice bass. So think about that. Try something different and don't just work it along the slop. Work it in different areas. Try it along some flooded brush. Try it near some timber. Try it under a dock. Try it along a bank. Use a frog in different areas, and I'm telling you, you will still get monumental blow-ups. Don't just relegate it for when you need something to work in the dense slop. Try it anytime for whatever reason, and you will be surprised at the amount of blow-ups you will get. And it's a lot of fun. So there you have it how I work a frog during the summer. I do it a little bit differently, and I'm using those frogs, not just in the slop, but in different situations, in different places, and I'm having a lot of success doing it. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.